What's up guys, I'm Josh, this is Froggy, and today we're going to be learning about Grace Tree Frogs. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so before I continue to talk about Grace Tree Frogs, I just wanted to mention that, as you may have noticed, Froggy is no longer with me, and I just put him away for the rest of the video. I'll be showing clips of him and different pictures, but amphibians aren't the best animals to handle for long periods of time. So um, just to make sure he's safe, he's going to be staying in his enclosure. Grace tree frogs are amazing frogs, and they even make great pets. Now, grace tree frogs can be found up in the northeastern part of North America, in a little bit of Canada, and they're pretty cool creatures. Now, as their name suggests, grace tree frogs live in trees, and they're an arboreal species. And arboreal means that um, they live in the trees instead of on the ground. One thing that makes the gray tree frog extremely cool is that they can actually change color. They can go from white to uh, dark brown to green. It all depends on the time of day and how dark it is. At night, they'll actually lighten up, and during the day, they'll darken. That's actually why their scientific name is Hyla Versicolor, because that means that they can change color in Latin. And um, yeah, they're pretty neat. And probably when you think about tree frogs, you tend to think about red-eyed tree frogs or um, some, you know, tropical species, bright colors. But these guys, they're almost like a bark color. They have cool patterns on them, so they blend in with the trees. And one unique feature is that they can actually freeze. You know, earlier when I talked about how they're in the northeastern part of the U.S. and in Canada, it drops below freezing a lot in those areas. And so what great tree frogs do, along with a couple other species of frogs like wood frogs, is they actually produce glycerol which their liver turns into glucose, and that circulates through their bloodstream. Now what this means is that most of the frog can freeze, but its blood will not. And why is that important? Well, if you think about it, when water freezes, what does it do? It expands. Now, if all the fluid in your body that has water in it freezes and expands, it's going to explode all those cells. They're not going to be able to handle um, the new volume of water. So, even though you know its skin can freeze and different parts of its body can freeze, as long as that blood doesn't freeze, then it can still circulate and um, it won't die. Another cool f features of uh, great tree frogs, and actually a lot of frogs do this, in fact probably most do, is that they pee as a self-defense mechanism. It's a little bit gross, but you know, if they're cornered and they can't go anywhere, then um, they'll pee to try and uh, make the predator or whoever disgusted and um, run away. Now, that's actually one of the reasons that I put Froggy back is because he peed on me. So it's a sign that, you know, he was a little bit stressed out and I definitely don't want to stress him out any more um, than he has to be. So I made sure to put him back. And if if you find a tree frog in the wild or any frog and they pee on you, don't worry about it. It's not going to, um, you know, it's not acidic or anything like that. Just try not to touch your eyes or mouth and just wash your hands as soon as possible. And speaking of washing hands, um, something that's fairly well known about amphibians is that um, they kind of breathe through their skin and they absorb a lot through their skin. So they absorb uh, water, different chemicals and everything. So a lot of times people will tell you to wash your hands before you handle an amphibian and such as a great tree frog. But I just want to quickly say that that's not entirely true. If you wash your hands with soap, then um, if you're picking up that frog, then um, the soap can actually go through the skin and really hurt the frog. So instead of washing your hands, what you want to do is if you're outside, you can rinse your hands off in a nearby body of water like a lake stream pond and the water will wash off um, any chemicals on your hands or anything and um, if you're at your house then you can just um, rinse your hands off but don't use don't use soap because it can go through their skin. Male gray tree frogs can be uh, one to two inches about roughly and females tend to be like one and a half to two and a half. The size can vary but they actually are um, sexually dimorphic. Uh, which means that you can tell males and females apart based on their appearance. So the larger ones are female and the smaller ones are male. And if you're looking for gray tree frogs out in the wild, they actually, there are two species that are so similar. There's gray tree frogs and copes tree frogs, and they look identical. The only way to tell them apart, pretty much, unless you're going to dissect them, is their calls. But it is actually, it's so hard to tell. And I'm actually not 100% sure if froggy is a copes tree frog or a gray tree frog but either way they um they're almost identical i believe the only difference is there's like a slight genetic difference in their dna but other than that they're basically the exact same frog in gray tree frogs are carnivores 
So they'll eat just like pretty much any other frog. They'll eat anything that you stick in front of their mouth. I've tried to um, feed him before hand feed Froggy, and he's stuck my whole finger in his mouth. And they don't have teeth or anything, so they're not going to hurt hurt you if they end up biting you or whatever. But yeah, they will stick anything in their mouth. It's actually really neat to watch them eat. They have a super aggressive feeding response. You put anything wiggling in front of them, and they'll bite it. And he really goes after it. Uh, when I tongue feed Froggy, he grabs the tongs and everything. And But um, yeah, their feeding response is super aggressive, and it's really entertaining to watch. So green tree frogs are an amazing find if you find them in the wild. But you can also have them as pets, just like I have Froggy. Now, um, one thing you do want to be aware of is that there are different kinds of ways to get a frog or really any other reptile amphibian for that matter. There's wild caught, which means either you or somebody else went into the wild, took that animal out of its um, habitat, its home, and now they're selling it. And it's super, it's pretty controversial over whether this is ethical or not. And I might share my opinion on that in another video sometime but for right now you just need to know that um, something wild caught means it was taken out of its home and if it's captive bred or CB for short what that means is that you know a long time ago there were some of that animal that were taken out of the wild but over generations they've been bred in captivity so that tends to mean that they're much more used to humans you know wild caught tree frogs you know they're They've probably only seen a few humans in their entire lifetime, if any, because they live so far up in the trees. And so all of a sudden, you know, this big giant human handling them, they're going to be really stressed out. But if they're raised as babies in captivity, then they're going to be much more docile and much more accepting of handling. And it's it's pretty hard to find captive bred gray tree frogs because there's not a huge demand for them. But which is it's kind of surprising because they're actually one of the best pet frogs ever. But I think it's mostly because they don't have a large color selection and variety and they're just not super well known but yeah i definitely think if you're thinking about getting um any type of frog a great tree frog is a great beginner pet this isn't a care guide or anything but they have super super easy requirements i mean they where they live they get drastic temperature changes from anywhere like 70 to 90 degrees in the summer down to below freezing in the winter unlike certain species of frogs that really can't handle um temperature changes they're they're definitely much more hardy than um your average frog with that being said, you should keep them, you know, 75-ish, you know, house temperature a little bit higher than that, but they don't require a ton of heat. They do need a little bit of UV, you know, some reptiles and amphibians, they need, well, mostly reptiles, not as much amphibians, but they'll need a special UV light. And what that does is it helps them metabolize certain nutrients, but with frogs, they really don't need it as much. So just either low wattage UVB or have them in front of a window. You know, UV doesn't really go through windows very well, but you know, just a little bit. So that way, if they want, they can get out into the sun. You know, not huge care requirements. The other thing is, because they are frogs, you do want to miss their enclosures, but they are tree frogs. So, you know, they don't need they don't need their entire uh, enclosure to just be water. Uh, that, that would not be good for them. You can get different infections and stuff from standing water. What you'd really want to do is have some sort of mulch on the ground, or you can even do paper towels but something that can hold in humidity, hold in water, and then they can choose to either be high up on the enclosure or they can be down and um, soak and get some of that water. And you always want to provide a water dish, especially for amphibians. You may not see them drink specifically, but you'll see them sit and soak in it and absorb water through their skin. And the other thing is, as I said, they're arboreal. So you definitely want to provide a ton of things for them to climb on and accessories like that. Uh, I actually, in Froggy's enclosure, I have, it used to be, it was designed for a fish tank, but you can use anything. They'll climb on anything. So, you know, he can blend in with the rocks on the bottom or he can climb up into the tree part. So you definitely want to make sure that they have a few different places they can hide. And the more places you provide for them to hide, to hide, the more they'll actually be out because they'll feel safer. You'll see the same thing in fish if you've ever kept fish. The more places an animal has to hide, the more likely they'll come out because they know that if something were to happen, they can quickly hide over here or over there. And if you do happen to have a pet tree frog, then you'll want to feed it a variety of insects, whether that be mealworms, superworms, or crickets. You want to make sure, this is important, you want to make sure that anything you feed a frog is, the diameter of it is smaller than the distance between their eyes. And the reason that is, is because when a frog eats, it actually doesn't have any teeth, as I said before. So it can't actually bite and chew. So what it does instead is it, swallows its eyes sink into its head and it pushes the food back it's just really amazing how these frogs were designed and you know just to kind of recap 
uh, grace tree frogs. They're they're an amazing species of tree frogs. They um, live in a colder climate up in the northeast of North America. And if you'd like to keep one as a pet, they do make great pets. And overall, they're just an amazing animal. If you learned something new or if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and comment down below if you have any questions. And I'll be making uh, more videos soon about different animals, mostly reptiles and amphibians. So um, if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, then make sure, you, like I said, make sure you subscribe. And if there's any videos that you'd specifically like to see or videos on certain animals or anything like that, make sure you comment that below as well. And thank you for watching. See you next time.